Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's real late. It's Hot 97. My name is Peter Rosenberg. Actually, I'm going to play myself. I'm going to have my Redskins hat here. I'm going to not wear it because DC is in the house today. <laughs> my man, a, a legend, a young legend, an yeah. OG, a young OG, but young. still all true. And you, it really, you really have been that for as long as I've, I've known you and known of you. Big G from Backyard Band is in the building. Oh, man. You use your government uh, regularly now, too, since you're an actor? Yeah, yeah. It's, Antoine, it's, you go by Anwan Glover also? Anwan, yeah, because, you know, people know me from Anwan Glover, Slim from The Wire, so it's, it's, it's like it's getting, it's, it's growing stock for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where do we start? Let's start with the music. Okay. Um, Now, before we even get into the new album, Street Antidote, which is out right now, yeah. and people could cop it digitally, and we'll get into all that. Let's start with the with your entry into backyard band. Yeah. When when did you when did you first get acquainted with backyard band and well, the other members? How did this come together? Well, I created the band with a guy named Walker Lattimore, mm -hmm. um, from 13th of Park Road, Northwest Uptown, DC, to be exact. Um, and it was a band first called Mighty Young Ones behind the Celebrity Hall Black Hole, 640 Park Morton. And uh, we we kind of went out separate ways, and I always was a fan of the junkyard band that was signed to Def Jam. So I wanted to create that sound, that look with the buckets. We got together and made Backyard. Um, so Backyard, the name Backyard, even which I always assumed it yeah. was it was homage to to Junkyard in some way. Yeah, that's we wanted to mimic those guys. I used to ride my bike down to 19th and M Dupont Circle and watch mm -hmm. those guys perform. And I wanted that same setting, but I wanted a different, a different, like, not just to be exactly like them, but, like, come off with those buckets and have the same, like, pull and, like, have all the neighborhoods want to hear that sound. And how long, what year was the, the was the way of beginning? Cause oh, man, like, i say 88, 89. 89, man. wow. Yeah. And, you, and you were a kid. Yeah, I was a little kid, man. I used to watch Bugs from Junkyard, man. I was a little kid, couldn't even really supposed to be outside. But I was riding my bike, sneaking out, jumping out the window just to hear those guys perform. And, man, by the time we get to the mid-'90s, yeah. a backyard band in D.C. was... Um, I would go as far as saying that by the mid-'90s, y'all were pretty much the foremost go-go band. I mean, yeah. it was always, the, you know, the real holy trinity of the ones that were, like, active. When we're, ta we're not talking about Chuck going right. into the, the more modern era was really Junkyard, R.E., and Backyard. Yeah. Rare essence, that is. And, and Northeast Groovers. And Northeast Groovers. Yeah. Um, they were a little, a little on the early... Well, R.E. was on the earlier side, too. Earth I guess R.E. Yeah. and Northeast Groovers were early 90s, really, and Junk, too. Junk, By too, mid By yeah. mid-90s was when Backyard yeah. was really... And was Skillet your biggest record at that point? Yeah, Um. well, I think Hood Related went, like, 69 on the Billboard charts. Okay. So it was like, you know, we've been, like, dumping it for a minute, but, like, we didn't put anything else out after that. It was just, like, street CDs. So, yeah. I mean, you have to understand, if you're watching this and you're not a Washingtonian, but you're a, a fan of Hot 97, you got to understand, 69 on the Billboard charts, This is these are for cats who are uh, pressing things up themselves or with a very small indie label, yeah. and the only radio play you're getting is basically uh, only in D.C., maybe some in Baltimore, maybe... 9.30 at night. Basically the same time the every same day. same time. One on the radio. Hour. On the radio. <laughs> now, you got both stations, which was nice, right? Yeah, So at that time, good. you get a half hour on KISS and a half hour on, on PGC. On, on PGC. But yeah. this is a very... So I got to tell you, I, I love when I meet, and I want to ask you about this too, like okay. I'll meet like Europeans or Japanese people who are obsessed with the culture. And they love it. Like Chuck murdered when he went to Japan and to Italy, all those different places. And Does it blow your mind when there are people yeah. who are that far removed who and get they, it? And they know your whole CD. Like, it's crazy. I'm just like, okay, well, what, this is where we need to, like, just, like, get together and, like, do a big tour. Because that's what Trouble Funk, you know, Chuck Brown, EU with Sugar Bear with the Butt. Of course. All those guys did it. Like you said, the mid-'80s, mid-'90s, hip-hop was that go-go swing back then with Salt and Pepper, Kid and Play. So I learned a lot, like, watching and watching a lot of OVH1 stuff. And they did a lot and tapped in with hip-hop, with Go-Go. So. Were you a hip-hop fan as well? Always. Like, Onyx, we, we, we had the influence in our music with the Wu-Tang. We thought we were Wu-Tang. 
at one time. I mean, you were big enough. You were big enough to be double Wu Tang. Yeah, so we we did it like, and we actually performed with all of those big people. Oh, like of course, Pop, Biggie. We performed with those guys. Wu Tang, Onyx on stage, Scarface, Devin. So it's just like we were that, but could never quite get the curl and the jury curl <laughs> to get. You know what I'm saying? It's funny though because now you know, in one breath, there's a sadness to that. Yeah. And then in another breath, there's a beauty to it. Also, of the of the of what the culture being what it is and being so pure. Yeah. From an artistic standpoint. Right, because people come in and I always tell them, man, you got to really see it. You know what I mean? And then, like, I know people that came to Howard University and couldn't stand Go Go, and as they graduated out of grad school, they fell in love with it because they were substance to coming to those shows right there at the nine thirty club, which used to be WST. Black Hole, all those clubs like Kilimanjaro, they jump into it and be like this, okay, well, this is like a roots. People that's used to those live bands in Philly and in New Orleans, it's crazy. Well, that's the, I think that's the thing for me that I love about it because growing up in Montgomery County, I was actually really just a hip-hop head, and I was right. one of those people, and I can say this lovingly now to the other people like me, when Go Go came on, I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, yeah, cool. But Google. I'm a hip hop head, because because <laughs> right. people look, because there were some cats. It was only Go Go. That's all they were That's playing was Go Go. And I was like, no, like I, I wanted a little Go Go, but I wanted hip hop. It wasn't really until I moved that the pride in it kind of came into play. Yeah. And I was like, even though I was a secondary Go Go fan in D.C., now that I'm gone, right? You rep it because you're like it's such, and you it makes you realize that it it's so interesting culturally that in America. This exists. This you you hear about it in other countries where it's this tiny pocket of a music. It's like our own uh, reggae in DC. It's, it's, this vibe that it's it's only a DC thing. It's awesome, man. But who what what artists who would come to town appreciated it the most? Was there anyone who really got man, it more we, than others? We always got it from rap a lot, like Scarface Man and Devin, Fifth Ward, the Ghetto Boys. They actually like really love to jam out. You'll get. Artists that come up and they might just because they getting their money and they jam a little bit, then they like out of there. But like you'll get a Devin that stay up there the whole time, Scarface, Ghetto Boys, they stay up there. They've always had an interesting connect to DC. Always at this. He was here. Always. He was sitting in the same seat maybe six months ago. I saw that. Oh, you did. And I yeah. said, tell me about. And I tried to explain to, explain to Ebro. I was like, you don't understand. Like Scarface. In D.C. is a different thing. Always was. Always. And he, he like, actually, we got a big show coming in Miami with him at King of Diamonds. He always liked to connect. Even if he's not on our show, he'll call me because he called me Gingo. I call, he'll call, text. He always give me ideas. I call and be like this. What you, what you think about this? He just kept that connect going. Even with Bun, Uncle Bun. I call Uncle Bun, like Bun B, Uncle Bun. So it's just crazy. Just that connect. It's just that Houston connect. Not saying nothing about anybody else, but it's just like there's something there musically. Yeah, Houston, DC. That, yeah, it's just crazy. And New Orleans. And the New Orleans. Fiend, Orleans. Yeah, yeah like, of course. All the rapper like um, like Master P guys, like Magic. All those guys used to come and perform at the Ice Box. We had that connection. You know what I mean? And it was crazy. Do you? Was it ever hard for you being of of your generation, of the generation that we just talked about, the '90s crew? Um, and really, from an individual standpoint, I mean, Huggy Bear had a, a great run, um, and Chuck, God bless, uh, you know, there are only a few names where the solo names and stand faces out. stand out. Yeah. Was there it's ever crazy. a difficulty to that, that you were one of those guys, Not, could, you know, almost was, feeling bad that, like, you get a lot of credit, right? but you have the voice, you have the, you're 14 feet tall, you, yeah. you stand out, you know what I'm I mean? I'm saying, it's like you, I, I try to market myself. All the way as a kid, you know what I mean? I always stood out because of my voice, but I always wanted to be that forefront guy. And the popularity level would keep you relevant. So I just kept banging at it, kept banging at it. And then when I caught on fire with that television thing, just to keep moving, but I never put none of my peers in a corner. I always try to bring them up. Like, you got to do this. We got to stick together. So just standing out, it's even more standoutish because, like, Everything that I'm doing now, it's just like my peers would be like, man, you saved Go-Go. You're keeping Go-Go alive because a lot of people say I was dying. But I won't let, I had too many conversations with Chuck. I will never let my music die. Do you feel to a certain extent 
with Chuck being gone, a, a, a even stronger sense of resp responsibility to the culture? Exactly, because I sat with him plenty of times, and he said something, but you got to keep it going. Like, I have a platform, and he, he said, look, you have television, radio, the street, the music. You got to keep going. You got to grow it, but you got to get these knuckleheads together and go where I've been and beyond. So it's hard sometimes, but you just got to keep on striving at it and keep hammering. I do it every night. Like when I leave here, I'm going to jump on the Amtrak and perform at Capital on K Street when I leave here. How many times? You, how often are you out right now? Four nights a week. We just got finished playing at opera last night and hit Union Station and shot right up here. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about what about uh, you know DC from a hip hop standpoint? DC has always had a bit of an air of hate being a problem. That's yeah, something that always yeah. is, the crabs in the bucket mentality with hip hop yeah. was always a thing. No, I'm saying that's what I told Wale when he first came out. The crabs in the bucket thing. Did he, you listen did you... to his first project? He, my name all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know he has grown. He has learned to not wear it on his shoulder. He helps when he can. He helps a great deal. Um, you got Shy Glizzy now. Mm -hmm. You got Garvey. You got the big fella. You got One Way. You got um, Chewy, Don Chewy. You got a bunch of guys that's, like, coming out of the city, and they getting buzzed now. But, like, Shy Glizzy, he, like, he he, he's moving. Shy Glizzy's moving. moving. So you got these kids that's doing hip-hop now because, like, DC wasn't known for hip-hop. We always had amazing artists, but now in the network, like Wale, they didn't open it up. You got Fat Trail, mm -hmm. all these guys, and it's crazy that all those guys came up under me on stage. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Opening like up. Yeah. With me. So just to see them is a breath of fresh air. But what, did, what about you? Did you get hate as being the yeah. guy? Yeah. And was it ever... A lot, of, a lot it... of hate, especially being on television. When I got on The Wire, they was like, oh, he going to crash. And they gonna, he ain't going to be on there long. I was on there 28 episodes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, like, it's a blessing. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's just, like, to be... But I... Like, my manager will tell you, he, I stay the same way. But so I'll tell you, I don't act like I'm better than nobody else. I sit with my people. I, I, I take a girl chicken wing after she bit it and bite that joint. Some <laughs> fries. I'm that same person. It keeps me grounded and know who I am. Have you, uh, have you stayed around the way? Are you still, yeah, I'm, you, still, I'm still home. Downtown? You know I mean? Yeah. Never uptown. moved out to the no, burst. It's, it's we're Northwest. Uptown. Yeah. Still we still got our spot up northwest. We, not, we out Maryland too. Okay. But um I don't really want to move because I can hit New York City. LA is too bougie for me. I love LA, but I can really beat New York up on the train. Yeah, and easy. Come up. And, and that way get you can right do back. both. And I can do both. My agent is here. Right. And I I, I really feel comfortable with still being a Washingtonian. But I, when, I, when I'm on the train, New York love me. I'm talking about I get off in Penn Station and I, I have a breath of fresh air that I know I'm grinding. New York City is like the hustle. It is nice because you're able to be a Washingtonian and so easily do New York. With L.A., that commitment to it, it's it makes hard, it difficult man. to always yeah. come back. I you lost know? two agents that way. They wanted me to move to L.A. Yeah. And I couldn't do the commute because my family, my mom, the band needs me. How many kids you got? Six. Got six. Six, yeah. Six, six little mon ones. Six monsters. And how, what's the age range? The, the last one, uh, one is 16. Everybody's older now. And then I got my nephew, you know what I mean? My daughter, both of them out of school now. I got a granddaughter. <laughs> my daughter jumped out there early. I got my little Moo Moo, Serenity. I mean, look, black, the black don't crack, man. Black You're a grandfather? Crack, man. Yeah, I'm I mean, a look, grandfather. You know, but it's it's <laughs> like she, she jumped out there early. Got you know it, I mean? right, 16, right, right. You know what I mean? And, I had a I had a little one, but you know we we good with it. <laughs> yeah, well, that, well, of course you are. Talk about that yeah. love for the grandbaby. That's different. Oh man, it's That's love. Different. Like I'm like you know, they say the shotgun by the door going to the prom like old dude. Yeah. But I'm gonna be a cool old dude. Though. You know what I'm saying with the, with the with the red skin hat tilted to the side. You know what I'm saying. But it's 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 just like growing family for me running around acting wild in my wilder years. Right. Just being a fool and just learning the game and surrounding myself around positive people and getting projects done. It's crazy. So it so you you lost agents though who wanted you to come out for acting purposes, but yeah. I need you here for auditions. Yeah. And they're like, if you're gonna be and out here, I need you out. What I used here. to do though, I used to run out on policy season, stay a month. But it's it's hard trying to commute back. 
because the weekend is the hottest time when you make the money. Right. <clears throat> hey, oh, yeah. yeah. For, at home. So, yeah, that, that's the hard part I was going to say because you could go out there for a few weeks at a time. Yeah, yeah. And, and hold it down. But Especially the same... during the week. You right, right. You go out there because <clears throat> that's when all the auditions are happening, during the week. And, like, L.A. pops in a day. Like, yep. you, you can get a Verizon or whatever kind of party going on, but it's a network party. Right. You might got Steven Stillberg nephew in there. Right, right, right. And somebody else in there is just trying to, like, okay, well, what does he do? So you, it's just the network side of it. You got to hit while it's hot. Um, so let's talk about this album real quick right now. Yeah. Street Antidote. Killing. You, it, you said it sold out right away. Sold out in all Downtown the Downtown locker room. Yeah, and, and it's, it's crazy because we had to re-up, like, three times. I think they're going to probably re-up again today. And just like the love, because like social media now, you can touch your fans. Told them, man, do a video. When you buy it, they cranking it. You know what I mean? And we we got a different sound, man. We don't sound like no other go-go band. Like, it's just amazing to get that response on what they, the graphics of the CD, if you see it. You got the green eyes, and we shot it, had the doctor uniform on. It's just crazy. Just creating that element that shows, like, CDs aren't dead yet. Well, that's what we were talking about off the air is with Gogo in particular, a music that really is based around cassettes being made, dubbed, right. and passed around, you know, obviously it's available digitally on iTunes and all that. People can go cop it wherever. Yeah. You can also go to BackyardBandDC.com. But it, you have to have the physical copy because this is music for all kinds of people. Some yeah. people ain't really messing around with iTunes. They want to go to the a store and get a CD. A lot of people want to go to the store and physically touch it. Right. And that's what Downtown Locker Room provided. You know what I mean? You can go. So is it a DTLR it. exclusive? Is it only a yeah, DTLR? Only a DTLR. Okay. Only a DTLR. And 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 you know, shout out to the whole DTLR staff, man. It's very supportive. And the other people or uh, vendors are kind of peed off, but of me just grabbing new management and taking over everything, you have to go with the stronger brand that's gonna push your brand just as hard as they push theirs. So that's what we're about. Well, so it just made it made sense. It made to, sense to man. go with them because yeah. they they were committed to really making it a and thing. And then they put and then they have a, like a tons of stores. And then people just don't have to go to that one location. They could just hit it around the city, and it just made it a big event for those two days. And it was crazy. That uh, that that's an awesome interesting. Like, in, yeah, interesting. <laughs> now, when did you when did you get away from everything else from vinyl cassette? When did you go just to CD and digital? Oh man. Probably been a minute since you've done yeah, any vinyl, it's huh? Been a, it's been a minute, but those DJs, this really DJs, they really like that vinyl, too. I know, of you course. Know? <laughs> I got my backyard vinyl You know stash. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, you know, I keep those and I just get everybody to sign them. But, you know. Who are, who are some of the... Uh, let's talk about this because uh, I love getting the opportunity to do so. Who are some of those key DJs? Over the years, man, that like really nailed us. Yeah, who really, and, who, or maybe you didn't get the credit, but um, clubs, radio, um, those, uh, whether it was Go Go ninety five on WPGC right, yeah. or the Joint like, Kiss, like, like, like back in the day, like Flex, he broke a lot. Like Tigger, like I, I went, my, I remember I argued with Tigger. Then he was like, man, gee, give me a minute. I was like, then every time I see him now, he's like, I don't want to die because that was one hour <laughs> hits. But like like the Tigger, the Flexes, you know what I mean? Well, Tigger, they Tigger's interesting those, too because Tigger came from the BX, records. yeah, and 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 was adopted by Maryland, went to Maryland, yep. stayed at PGC, and really then figured out Go Go, and you know, yeah. got over time yeah. became such a real part of the DC community. Yeah, it was crazy, like CeeLo. Of course, all those guys, funk regulated CeeLo, they broke those records. They played them, played CeeLo them. CeeLo mixed Go Go, yeah, for different. real. Like he could do it. Like CeeLo somehow, because I got to tell you, if you're if you're a DJ and you're not a DJ who really played Go Go all the time, like me, you know, I'm one of I'm one of those cats that like when I was playing out with vinyl, yeah. I have my little set. I have my yeah. you know my my 20, 30 Go Go records. That's all yeah. I needed. I go to the store and say, give me the newest, hottest thing. Right. But if you're a DJ who really could play Go Go like CeeLo could? CeeLo could mix, man. Like, he could mix Go-Go records. He broke a lot of our songs. You know how hard it is? You know what those, <laughs> how different those drums are? And it, Way different. That's it, it, to, to be able to do that is such a testament. Um, DJ Book could play... Book, <laughs> yeah, Book. He broke a lot of records. He played a lot of records in different places, too. You know what I mean? I, I just shout out to all those DJs because they really, like, play back out. It's hard for DJs to, like, really catch on to, if you're not that hot yet. But when we just broke that street, that's where. It, and then when they kept hearing it, it was. What a about rap. my guy DJ Eminem? Eminem too. Eminem, man, it's crazy, man. 
like um, analyze all those guys, yeah. man. Like they really like touched on it and really like cranked it out. Alize, Alize, and that's the thing Big about GC. John. It's funny. It's funny for the amount of uh, shout out to Iron, Iron, um, everybody for man. for all the. For all that we can say about DC, there there being some issues with uh, hate between artists and things like that, or, or yeah, it's crazy. Man. They, it, with it, because when it comes to the DJs, man, universally the amount of support that people wanted to give to all things DC was really strong. You yeah. know, so I really think it's more. I think that the go go, and I'm kind of uh, spitballing right here, but I think that the go go thing made it makes DC a complicated market to blow from. Yeah. Because if you were a rap artist, generally, if you're from any other city and you're a rap artist, your core, the streets, are go all go. rocking with you. But in right. D.C., the streets were all go-go. Go -go. But it's, it's, but everywhere to, else didn't get go-go. Go -go. So now who's going to blow? It gets I'm, confusing. I'm going to keep it real with you. Like now, hip-hop has really came up in D.C. So you have had different people say, man, go-go kind of dying off, kind of going down. And then when Chuck passed, but it's like, I'm hammering it, man. We out. You can see my Instagram, my Facebook live. We killing it. We got What is people. your Instagram? What's your name on there? Anwan Glover. A N. Oh, just Anwan Glover. Yeah, okay. Anwan Glover. And it's it's like every night it's a it's an event. We we popping off. We 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 got the crowd going. We we like really practically own Howard Theater when we go in there and sell out. So it's like our people still come out with that cult movement, man. And then you got a fat trail that might come out one night and just Course. jump and do one song. While they might jump on a joint with us when he slide through the city. So it's just, I think we need to stick together more as go go and do like a tour because we got fans all over, but it's just the egos and the big headedness. Who who are the other I, I've been out of DC now for damn near almost a decade, which is yeah. crazy. Who are the other popping right now? Who TC, else is T C B. T C B of course who was out with yeah. Wale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. T nah, that was uh UCB. Oh that was oh it was UCB, UCB was with Wale? Yeah, we was with U C B last night. Oh god, my bad. They just they just put their band back together because okay. some of them stayed with Wale and then they put together TCB, UCB, uh, T.O.B., uh, Mental Attraction. It's a bunch of young guys out there. You got half of the red asses broke and made, like, familiar faces with D. Floyd. Okay. Gogo Mickey, um, Scooby, Miss Kim. And does that mean, is there yeah. no actual, does R.E. as a thing yeah. still exist white, also? White Boy. White, white Boy, Boy still, still has a... Yeah, he still has okay. R.E., he got him, Killer Cow, and um, right now they got Quick and Smoke. They used to play for Northeast Groovers. Okay. So they, they go goes man, you know, it's mixing around. And then what about got, the older bands? What if, from the early days? Ah, uh, man, you got Sugar Bear still going strong. Of course. He's, he he's never, he ain't, he ain't never stopped. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's he, he, he don't age neither. Yeah. You got yeah, Trouble yeah. Funk that came back. They got a few good new members in there. They got uh, Blackwell playing with them now. So it's like a lot of people just saying it, and they saying, gee, you making people step up on their A game because I come hard with it, man. I ain't playing around. I'm 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 trying to wipe everybody out, but try to keep everybody together at the same. Who's the ultimate at the same time? Besides, and it's, it's, it's sad. Tough. It's I know, sad, but, it, but you have to do that. That's what all great artists yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, I got. You want to uplift when I'm on the stage? But I gotta know. wipe you out, but we can do a tour together. <laughs> exactly. <of course. laughs> um, besides Chuck Brown, yeah, who else are your inspirations live music wise? Oh man, Bugs from Junkyard. Just signed with Def Jam. I was like, I call him Pops. He just had a 50th anniversary at Howard Theater. And I just wanted to mimic him so much. And, like, when I talk to him, he just got so much knowledge, but he just don't talk to everybody. But Foz and Gogo, -Go, just like Chuck, Bugs, and um, I, I got a lot of, like, knowledge from D. Floyd. You know what I mean? I used to always sit beside Foots, God bless the dead, the drummer, original drummer, um, from Brad S is a heavy one, the original drummer from um, Junkyard. How many yeah. members have there been on Backyard Band over the years? Um, we still got the same members. We, Always. We like, yeah, we uh, swapped out um, two guitars and added one uh, keyboard player. And then we re recently let go. Well, our singer, she left, and we have our new singer. So only probably like two, three, like three members. But uh we we have our original core members, Buggy Sauce, me, Los, Wincy, Mike, and EB. What would you say is the biggest backyard record? Oh man! Like what's the, if you do, if you're doing a show at Howard Theater and you're closing out, what's the what's the what's the one that we got? We got plenty, but the the um the pretty girls. Pretty girls still in. Yeah, they 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 go crazy, they go crazy over that still. 
<laughs> now, now speak- and the hello though, the hello. Oh, now my my personal the, re- the remix. My personal favorite was uh, I just loved Cuddy. This was actually one Gogo record I could cut a little bit, and it was fire. Was uh, I heard it's the bomb. Yeah, they, he can he can sing that right now. Once really, he can sing that, and they will go bananas. That joint is flame. Because we got like a lot of crowd participation with it. So yeah, they scream well, to the top of the lungs. Now speaking man. of pretty girls. I gotta explain something. We and we did this the first time I interviewed you. We talked about this, but I don't think we did video back then. Right. Um. It, in my days, you have to understand another thing about go-go culture. If you're not from DC, so it is the it is the voice of the streets yep. and the hood. That's that's what go, where go-go comes from. Yet it's so big that at least when I was growing up, and I know it continued for a while afterwards. Yeah. Y'all played in the suburbs all the time. That's where you get your most That's love. That's where you get the love. <laughs> That's where you get that bread. You those, get that bread, promises. the pretty girls. Yo, you, you're going out there. And guys, you have to understand, I, I'm trying to, I got to make this plain and simple for people who don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about private schools with the whitest girls who have ever lived. So you're talking about Monday through Thursday. Yeah. They're playing every night, every hood spot there is to play, they're there. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, y'all yeah. might be at Stone Ridge. Yep. And and Holton Arms. Holton Arms. You like yep. you and, and, Sidwell. Sidwell friends. We play for Chelsea Clinton. And, and, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is it's such a fascinating part of DC yeah. culture. And they and, and they love it. And they love they it. Go they go crazy. Crazy. Like take their ponytails out. And it, it's just amazing on like how the culture is now and how it is like the social media. You can capture that. Like back then, you couldn't really catch it. Now that you couldn't film nobody but your phone, you just ah 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 and get it in and show it. And this shows how people respond to the beat, the, the keyboards, and the voices of so the mics. So is it still is it still happening? Yeah, it's crazy. The, the 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 private school gig still is still a thing. Yeah, but like they get the younger bands now. Got it. You know what I mean? But they still call for us. But like like I said, we just switched over and changed over management. We didn't got a few calls. We just um, school with our walls. Yep. They wanted because the song "Hello" the remix to Adele Mubaga is like. All the schools are calling right now. About that one. Yeah. But that's a beautiful thing. So you yeah. would you would see UCB and TCB and these bands are getting yeah. those same op- looks that y'all yep. used to get. And we still the- get and they still call it. Yo, man. that's amazing. Man. I just yeah. I, I have to explain it because I always found it culturally fascinating and awesome. And that that Go Go's was such a big thing everywhere in, in DC. And I love, man, I love when I meet people who are from a similar who are from the area and get it. You right. like you just kind of have to. It's something you have to experience, something you have to see in person, um, to appreciate and really, really get. get and I, I hope that right now a lot of y'all out there are gonna be like, yo, what are these guys talking about? And <laughs> go on backyardbanddc.com and cop this street antidote. Um, and can you can you order the CD as well? Yeah, on um on our website. Okay, on Backyard Band yeah, DC back, order. Yeah. Now tell me real quick, what's the TV plans with you? Because obviously you were on The Wire for a long time. You're yep. an actor. Uh, what's coming up? Well, I got The Deuce right now. Uh, HBO just picked that up. I play a kid named Leon. James Franco is in it. It's about the, um, taking over the porn industry and uh, prostitution extortion in the uh, 70s. It's going to be amazing. Wow. Um, I want guys to stay tuned because, like, I'm not playing. A, this is my first time not playing a gangster role. Well, I got another movie called Dermaphoria be out late summer, but this I was so excited about getting this role that they're gonna see me in a whole nother life. Just playing a regular guy. Yeah, I'm a chef, man. Like, in, just in the in in I own an all day diner. My name is Leon. So stay tuned for that. That's called Deuce. Deuce, yeah. HBO. And that's HBO coming yeah. coming soon. Yeah. Um. Did you ever did you ever have like have an audition or get an opportunity? I did, I don't know. Did did any DC cats get opportunities at House of Cards? You know what? I didn't. Cuz it was all shot but around DC, so I wondered shot. if people got an got opportunities. And you know, people asked me that I was running just I was cuz I come up here a lot. Like I'm up here auditioning so much. I read for it'll blow your mind the stuff I read for and don't get you know what I'm saying? I'll be looking. But once those cats get it and I know they nailed it, I'll be like, I, I, I give them the top. How honest. do you, what do you, what do you think? Like, when you, that's an interesting position because you're a big star in one world, right? Right. And in acting, you've had a nice success, but you're yeah. also hustling. Like, you just, it's, it's a craft that you learn later in and life. And you see the Malik Yobas in the auditions and you run into all these people and, I'd be like, okay, dang, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up because I'm, I'm reading. Audi- these reading same, with the good people. Reading with the big people. So, like, I learned from the older guys 
Like, sometimes you don't catch that fire until you late 40s, mid. You know, this happens you know, like that. Fortunately, you, fortunately <laughs> you still look 29 years old. So. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm just going to keep on nailing it and just keep chasing it. And then I got that. We got a, we got the number one web series, Transitions. I got to see. And, I got to see Transitions. Oh, you got to look it up. I play Adonis. I'm the, the, um, the lead in it. Okay. It's crazy. We're shooting Checkmate right now. A lot of people are looking at it right now. Um, they pitching it over to different networks. And I... I, I guarantee, man, we should be getting picked up on that soon. It's crazy, too. You're going to love it, I'm looking it, it up right now. Yeah, you're going to love it. When you get some time, some downtime, just check it out. The graphics, everything, the camera angles. How long are the episodes? Crazy. Uh, oh, man, sometimes they're a little longer than others. Okay, but, but they're like full episodes. This yeah, is like full a- episodes, yeah. But we're shooting the finale right now, Checkmate, and that's going to also be uh, distributed through um, DTLR, too. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm looking forward to check that out. Hey, and well, it's a pleasure, man. Oh, man, it's a pleasure. Thank you, New York City. Yo, it's, it's an honor getting to talk to you and see my D.C. guy up here. That's Big G up. from Backyard, and Juan Glove. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Cheers.